everyone. My name is Mana, and I work at AG Grid. Um, but I don't work on the grid. I work on the charting team, where I build the AG Charts charting library. And I was curious to know whether some of the performance optimization strategies that we use in AG Charts also apply when you're using Canvas directly in React. I had an idea about the answer to that question, but I needed content for this talk, so let's roll with it. What I did was I made an app, I made a React app that renders um, some data points using Canvas in React. This is my app. Um, it's really basic, but it does the job. And I added some buttons that allow you to change the fills and the strokes. I added a slider, which lets me size my circles. And I also added some buttons to change the data from 100 to 50,000 and then to 100,000, um, just to check how it performs. At 100,000, I mean, at 100, it's um, pretty performant, not anything. Um, slow or noticeable at 50,000 data points, it's still pretty good. Um, but then when I increase to 100,000, it kind of starts being super slow and pretty much unusable. So then I started uh, applying some of the techniques that I was telling you about earlier. Um, and I'm gonna tell you how I did that in this talk. But before I do that, I just wanna briefly talk about Canvas. Let me get back to my slideshow. For those of you who don't know about Canvas, um, well, the Canvas API can be um, used to draw things using JavaScript and the Canvas HTML element. If you're using it in React, you um, would have to get a reference to the Canvas element, and then uh, the 2D rendering context, which has methods which you can invoke. Uh, you can, for example, if you want to render a circle, apply the fill style, and then use the begin path uh, and arc drawing methods to uh, load the drawing commands, and then if we, when you invoke the fill command, it actually does the drawing operation, uh, and then you just restore the state, so it's pretty simple to use. For my React app, what I did was I created a React component that just returns a HTML canvas element, and then I uh, just made some custom hooks, which set up the canvas, and I was gonna go into how it does a bunch of stuff like sizing the canvas and scaling it, et cetera, blah, blah, boring. Let's move on to the interesting stuff. So the actual drawing bit is a method which goes through my data, and my data is just an array of x, y values, nothing too fancy. And uh, for each one, I'll just save the context of the canvas and then use the begin path and arc method to um, load the drawing commands at that at those coordinates, and then apply the styles like the fill and the stroke, and then um, invoke the drawing commands fill and stroke. And then before I finish off, I restore the state and then move on to the next data point. This is the most basic way of using Canvas. So that was obviously slow based on my interactions with the app. And this is the performance profile for it. You can see a big chunk of it the execution time is spent in the canvas rendering methods. Um, specifically, actually, it's, it's a lot of time spent in the canvas restore. And uh, here's the bottom down of the profile. So you can see it took about 56 milliseconds to render 50,000 data points. And for the 100,000, it's even worse. Uh, it takes around 300 milliseconds. So it's slow um, because there's too many Canvas render calls and Canvas rendering has its limits. So we need to find a way to reduce those. And one way of doing that is by doing something called batch rendering. So while I'm rendering those 100 points or 100,000 points, everything is the same, the circles, 
the fills, the size, um, nothing's changing. I don't need to do save and restore, for example. What I can do is load the drawing state machine with like a bunch of commands. So instead of individually drawing the circles, draw one path. Um, and then call fill and stroke. So essentially reducing the complexity from n or 50,000 or 100,000 to just one. And I would expect that would significantly improve performance. So we end up going from what looked like this function to save the state before looping through the data and call begin path just once then go through your data and uh, move to the coordinate that you want to move to, do the uh, arc command for that circle. When you finish looping through your data, then you can apply all your styles and then do the actual drawing operation. And luckily, it was a lot faster. It was very, very, very impressive. You can see it only took eight milliseconds compared to previously where it took 56 milliseconds. And for the 100,000 case, it's even better, it's even faster, it's fabulous. Um, but there's just one small tiny problem. So when we're rendering 100 points and none of them are overlapping, it looks exactly the same. When you're rendering 50,000, in the simple case, it looks like this, but when you try and batch it all together, it ends up looking like this, because now it's all just one giant big path. So it looks like a child's drawing. Uh, it's definitely not what you want. It solves one problem. It's fast, but it's not really ideal. So that's where I came up with this idea of the ca off-screen canvas because I still want to just draw the circle once, and then I want to position it on different parts of the canvas. So we can use the off-screen canvas similar to how we use normal canvas, but instead size it to the size of one individual circle. Um, I'm gonna skip over all of this because don't know time. Um, and now instead, we use the off-screen canvas context to uh, apply the fill and the stroke then draw the circle to my off-screen canvas. I only need one off-screen canvas once. And then when I loop through my data, I use the main canvas draw image method to draw my off-screen canvas onto my main canvas several times at different coordinates. So this here is really a difference between invoking canvas, begin path, and arc for every data point versus uh, canvas.drawImage. And first off, well, it solves the, uh, the drawing issue that we had earlier. So it looks exactly the same as if you were to render it individually. But is it faster? Uh, the answer is yes, it is, slightly. Not as fast as I'd hoped, but it's still pretty impressive. For the 50,000 case, it's actually slightly faster, so it takes a total of 32 milliseconds compared to 56. For the 100,000 case, it's even more impressive. It takes 67 milliseconds compared to 300 milliseconds. So the more data you have, the more apparent it becomes and the more performant it becomes using this technique. This is kind of um, the moral of my story. You shouldn't really make any assumptions when it comes to performance improvements. There should always be tests, profiling, research, and not to optimize blindly. Uh, that's what we do at AG Charts. We do lots of testing, profiling, researching to make the best charting library in the world, which is why you should not really be using um, Canvas directly. Don't bother, just use AG Charts. But if you absolutely must, then uh, here are my top tips. Use off-screen Canvas which is also a transferable object. You can use it uh, in a worker thread, so you're not blocking the main thread if you're rendering something really complex. Also, I have change detection because applying state changes is very expensive in Canvas. You shouldn't really be setting the state if it's the same thing. For example, setting the font, it would be extremely slow because it's still loading the font. And then uh, use batch rendering where you can, so where shapes are not overlapping, where you have one path uh, which just has a stroke and doesn't have a fill. So only re-render what's necessary. Uh, don't bother canvas when you don't have to, and that will improve your performance. Thanks for listening.